Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a case study. A viewer has an issue with a girl and he wants to know how to distinguish his unhealthy needs from his healthy needs. Well, he mostly gets how to do that, but he does want to know how to deal with his unhealthy needs. That is his wuss energy. That's how we usually feel unhealthy needs as wuss energy when it comes up. To not give in to the wuss energy when you feel it. And the point we'll get to here, and I'll elaborate on, is that psychological health is never contingent on what someone else does or doesn't do. Yes, you can be hurt by others, but your health, your psychological health, your ability to perceive and engage with reality is 100% controlled by you. Now, other people do play a role, of course, especially in childhood. You're affected by others. You are. But if your joints hurt, it's not gravity's fault. Yes, gravity does affect you, but also you weigh, you know, a seventh of a ton. So what's going on here with this guy is, well, the sum is, is he's a young guy. He just started college. Um, and he, you know, began to see a girl. He became needy, drove her away, you know, been there and done that. And he gets that, right? That's not the problem. The problem is, is he wants closure. He writes, Regarding this brief relationship, <clears throat> I'm going through a lot of pain, mostly anger. There's a good indication of what's going on there. As he's going through pain, he refers to anger as pain. That's going to be a good, okay, just remember that. I'm trying to wrap my, this is him again, I'm trying to wrap my head around the anger and handle it in a healthy way. Anyway, I feel like I want to have a conversation with this girl just to add some extra closure to what we had. And again, he gets the motivation behind this is uh, the motivation behind behind having this conversation is to decrease pain, to put a balm on it, which is the anatomy of an unhealthy need. We'll talk about it. He read my book. He gets it. He continues. I really caught feelings for her. She was the first woman I was ever involved with in a romantic way where I thought, wow, I'd marry this woman. And he does get that this hypothetical conversation is going to fulfill some unhealthy need, and he's not sure how to get over it or replace that energy, replace that with wuss energy, how to channel that wuss energy perhaps into a leg workout, which could help. I'm not going to say much about that. It's more psychologically neutral than anything. But wouldn't, but he really wants to know what's the framework. How do you approach? What's the framework for approaching an unhealthy need this was energy when it comes up? So we'll cover this. Well, first we'll talk about the difference between a healthy need and an unhealthy need, just to you know give some background. And then what to do with an unhealthy need when it arises. And then we'll talk about not only what to do with the unhealthy need, but of course how to go about doing it, which is most of the issue. So first, what is the difference between healthy needs and unhealthy needs? It comes down to whether the purpose of the need is to increase pleasure or decrease pain. I see I spelled soothe wrong. Nice going, idiot. So yeah, so are you increasing pleasure, whether the need would expose you to your insecurity, weaken it, therefore increase your pleasure in life by having less palpable insecurities? Or whether you go about covering up the insecurity. Another way to think about it is, does this need, does it help connect you with others? Or does it disconnect you from others? Yeah, to go back to my, mis <laughs> go back to my misspelling, you, you think you're a soothsayer. Really, you're a soothsayer. Am I right? All right. Anyways, this requires a level of emotional literacy to do this, though, to... Look at, hmm, does this increase pleasure or decrease pain? You've really got to go through therapy. I mean, that's what you do in therapy is you become emotionally literate. You can read your emotions. You can decode, deconstruct your emotions. That's the idea in therapy. That's the process. We're going to go through a little bit of that process today. But until that ability to differentiate healthy versus unhealthy needs, until that develops, a good way to go about looking at it is, does the need require anything of somebody else? Does it, does it say, okay, in order to make me feel a certain way, you have to do something? So as the viewer sees, yes, 
looking after clo not only closure, but extra closure from his own words, from the viewer's own words, would of course be an unhealthy need. He gets that. Now, just a little bit more background here, because I think this matters, and I go into this more in my upcoming book, but there are two kinds of healthy needs. I didn't go into this nuance in the first book. It wasn't as clear in my mind at that point, to be honest, so that was kind of in the back there, just not fully explicated. But there are primary healthy needs and secondary healthy needs. A primary healthy need is always the same, pretty much. It's your need. Psychologically, it's your need to have a feeling, to have your own feeling state, which is just a psychological representation of a decision, to have your own decision based on your own feeling, to identify it, and to express it in a way that is conducive to the situation. And you say, well, I don't know how to go about doing this. Yeah, I know. Well, you haven't developed your personality to the extent where you're able to do that. And that's exactly the point of therapy. We'll go through how to do this or what one frame in the entire film that is your psychological development. What does one frame look like? We'll, we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, and what that what that how is, is, is just the process behind that ability to achieve your primary need. That's what it is. The secondary need, however, which is still healthy, is the inevitable result of the primary need. Obviously, there's going to be some time delay there. It's not as immediate as we want it to be. But the secondary need is just the result of getting your primary need met, doing it well, and doing it consistently. So, just as an example, to take this uh, listener, this viewer situation, the primary need is, of course, for him to talk to women. That's it. That's your need. Your secondary need would be to get a girlfriend or maybe some other positive feedback from a woman. I mean, not even positive, just some kind of feedback, just some kind of feedback that you can pay attention to. That would be a secondary need. And an unhealthy need, of course, is to try to get one particular girl to like you. Now I get it. After you've been on like three or four dates, you start to like a girl and you, you know, you want to court her, you like her. That's fine. I get it. But don't put that ahead of your primary need. That's when it becomes a problem is when you start to put the girl and her feelings, what she feels or doesn't feel ahead of what you feel. I know like pickup guys talk about frame. That is the anatomy of frame. Now to the main issue, which is what do you do with your unhealthy need when it arises? That's all background information. I, I think this listener gets that. But what do you do when, with your unhealthy need when it arises? When this, when you feel this wussiness arise, um, you, right, you can't simply ignore it. You can't not care about what others think. In order to not care about what others think, you need to know what you think. In order to not care about how others feel, about how another feels, you need to care about what you feel. Nature abhors a vacuum. I mean, people do this all the time. They get triggered by a situation and they think, okay, next time I'm in this situation or with this person, next time I'm in this situation or with this person, I'm just not going to let it affect me as much. Oh, I'll laugh it off. It's no big deal. No, that's not how this works. The through way here is to identify what does it look like for you to get your primary need met. Yes, in this listener's situation, it would be talking with women. It would be to do to also develop psychologically, to go through the adult stages of development. That's what I talk about. I will definitely link that in the description. I would have this listener and everybody else focus on the parent separation. That's going to carry over into how you're able to dissipate, to handle the Swiss energy when it comes up. I'll put this in the example so it makes more sense. But that's only what you need to do, right? 95% um, of this is, which I think this listener, this viewer, I don't know what to call him, this viewer gets, this case study gets. He gets what you need to do. 95% of this is going to be how you go about doing it. And that's what we'll talk about here. Here is, oh, here it is. Okay, so yeah, 95% of this is going to be how to go about doing it, how to go about getting your healthy need met. Um, and the first thing you need to do, well, Really, the first thing you need to do is you need to learn how to be honest about your issue. But first, you got to know what your issue is just for the sake of this 
this example. And you got to know what your pattern is. And it's the same pattern for everybody. The first step is you have a healthy need. which is the identification of a feeling state. Now in therapy, I want to get more nuanced about this, what this looks like for you specifically, but you have a feeling state and you want to get clear on what that is. Now the second step, and that's true for everybody uh, to varying degrees, looks a little bit different, but fundamentally that's what it is. Now the second step, step is you have anxiety about that healthy need. I'm guessing what this listener does. I'm, I'm, maybe this is just me projecting. But if you listen to this channel, if you watch it, probably one form of your anxiety that comes up is intellectual minimization. You say, like, you have a, a, a need, you have a feeling. Let's say you go, oh, I'm fine. It's no big deal. Or what I'm guessing comes up with girls is maybe it's a negative feeling. Maybe it's something mean that came up and, and your way of repressing it is to go, oh, well, I'm a good person. A good person wouldn't say that. A good person wouldn't even feel that. So I'm not even going to try to communicate it or anything. So that's one way you can minimize your healthy, your feeling state. Now, uh, I mean, this. so the next step is, okay, because you have a need and you repress it, that's that says isolation. I was starting to write something else. And then there's shame, right? With isolation comes shame. And the way to work through this is just to identify where you sabotage yourself. That's a good concrete representation of your shame. And then the shame bleeds over into the payoff, which is the state that you put yourself in to distract yourself, if nothing else, from the stress that you feel from having a healthy need and repressing it. Now, what I'm guessing the payoff here for this uh, young man is because he's a young man is the avoidance of invalidation. I just assume if you're 28, 30 or younger, I just assume that part of your payoff is the avoidance of invalidation. The idea that, oh, this girl who I'm dating could have had a negative feeling state because of my need and I avoided that. Right? I repressed, I changed how I felt to make sure she feels a certain way or doesn't feel a certain way. I avoided the stress of that and I got a relief from that, right? I got some kind of relief from that. That would be one example of the payoff. And then what would the belief be? You develop a belief about yourself and the world, your worldview based on how you manage or don't emotions. The belief here is I'm not good enough for relationships. I'm not, you know, I don't have the right to my own feelings, to my own psychological representations of decisions in the context of a relationship. I don't have the right to my own frame, my own identity in the context of a relationship, of my own healthy ego. Okay, so that's the emotional pattern that you need to put in your own words. And that's part of what we do in therapy. Then you need to know how to talk through it. This is all the framework for how to process wussy energy. So how do you talk about it? Well, another five-step process makes it really easy to remember. The first thing to do is just to state the facts of the situation. So what is the situation with this girl? I'm just going to take you through how to process this. Uh, well, you said it. There's a brief relationship, and I think the other important fact is she dumped you. How do you feel about this? It sounds like you feel anxious. There's probably a better word. I'm just going to say anxious. Only you know how you feel. I'm just going to you know, generally say how it feels. And then the next is what does that mean? What is that feeling, meaning, mean about you? Not what is the situation? Not what do the facts out there mean about you? Or what does your feeling mean about her? It's not that. <clears throat> it's what is your feeling mean about you? It's very, very particular way of going about this. There's, you know, good reason for that. Uh, I'll go to that, that a lot more in my book. Um, so it sounds like what this anxious feeling means to you is, 
it matters what other people think. And just to get to more of the nougat of that meaning, it's good to ask yourself why. Why do you care about what other people think? Right? What does that mean about you? Is essentially what that why asks. Well, it could mean you're a loser. Why? This is your belief, right? This is what the meaning you place on it. It means I'm a loser. Why? Because my dad's a loser. Because he's an alcoholic. Okay, so now what you're saying is you feel anxious. Your anxiety here, you feel anxious because your dad's an alcoholic. Because you have not separated fully from your dad's alcoholism. Because your dad has a drinking problem. And you haven't separated from it. So, you know, you're probably trying to get him to stop drinking. That's another instance of you putting his feeling state before your I am here to serve my dad and his feeling or his lack of feeling, his feeling that would make him drink more. I put my feelings on the back burner. So you see how you're just, you know, uh, reliving this pattern with your father with this girl. It's not about your feelings. It's not about you. It's about him or her, or other people, and making them feel a certain way. Well, you can do that, and you can tell yourself you're a good person, uh, and you can subscribe. There's lots of moral codes out there, there that will tell you you're a good person for doing that, but you're not going to be able to form secure relationships with other people. So I don't know how good of a person that's really going to make you. It's going to just make you crazier and more likely to do really not good things in the future. <clears throat> okay. So that's the meaning. So what's the payoff? And it's good to talk through that meaning because we're going to talk about how this relates to conflict in your life and that there's another potential conflict. So there's a conflict with this girl. Yes, but there's also seems like a conflict here with your dad. Good. We're adding layers. We're, create, we're creating a rich tapestry out of your life and your emotional issues. That's the idea. See what we're doing here? We're getting involved in your life. That this is your life we care about. We don't care about her life or even your relationship with her. Your life is the thing that matters. That This is what we're pouring our libidinal energy into to build that dam, to channel that energy eventually into the power of city. Just stacking, stacking those bricks. So the payoff here, like I said, it sounds like the avoidance of invalidation. Um, also, what anxiety, you can always look at the payoff in terms of protecting yourself. How does this anxiety protect me from this girl, from other girls? You know, because I don't want to be around girls anymore because when I'm around girls, I see myself. When I'm around girls, I, I see how I associate my dad's loserness and his drinking with my own sense of loserness. I see how I have yet to fully disconnect from my dad. I don't want to be around girls. I want to protect myself from that. So you can see how that would help perpetuate, benefit the neurosis, benefit what feels comfortable for you, even if it's not very helpful. Now, how do you contribute? Oh, wait, I'm saying this in terms of payoff, but this is really responsibility. I'm just getting this mixed up. Actually, whatever. So this is your responsibility for your emotions, sorry. Uh, but what I was saying about, you know, your payoff is is correct there. Um, so the benefit, how you're responsible for the anxiety, the benefit is, okay, well, I can use this anxiety to help protect me from other girls. Not only this girl, but other girls. And so that's the benefit. And then there's the contribution. How do you contribute to the anxiety? Where you, And then here I think you would uh, look at where you hide where you hide from other girls, where you hide from maybe your professor in class, you know, whatever feels real to you as you're discussing this or whatever feels most relevant to you as you're discussing this is going to have the most psychological content and value for you. And then how do you relate with this girl? The easiest way to relate with her is, well, have you been in a situation or relationship with the girl for a month and you just didn't feel anything and like she wanted closure, right? How would you feel about that? Or, um, how do you relate with your dad, right? Because there's a conflict here with your dad. There's some tension there because you feel trapped by his alcoholism. You're, you're not an alcoholic, but how do you use something like alcohol to distract you from your feeling states? Okay, well, you, you clearly use a girl's validation or lack thereof or the avoidance of her uh, invalidation to as your own, you know, kind of alcohol. That's your own liquor. And so what do you do with this? 
Well, you just decide what feeling states you can identify and what you're able to do and talk through them, right? The, the point is to see, I mean, as, as I said before, how you are in class with your professors, how that carries over and affects you in all areas of your life, including your relationship with women. So that's the framework for processing this. And of course, the paradox is you don't need closure from her, right? You need closure from yourself. You don't need closure from her anymore because you can explain her thoughts. You'll be able to explain her thoughts on how she feels about it probably better than she could. Like, like what would she say if her id was eloquent? She would say something like, well, you're not ready for a relationship. Look, there's all these missing components in your life. Look at these holes. You were <clears throat> promoted too early. You know, you got into this relationship too early. That's, I mean, that's like the, the secret head fake um, benefit of being in college. It's because when you're in college, like you're just exposed to so much because everything's easy for you. Like everything is so much easier. It's just like life on easy mode. So things come into your life and you tend to mess them up because but that can show you where your where your weak points are, right? Just like Stallone, just like Rocky and Rocky three. He got success too early. He wasn't psychologically ready for it and he lost it. And then he had to work to get it back. And as Rocky three and other stories like this indicates, this is a archetypal an archetypal thing you need to go through in order to develop. So you got to look at those motifs, look at your dreams, com com begin to compare them, right? You're just getting more involved in your own life. Now, this is, I guess, the girl helping you. Right, you're pouring energy into your own psyche. Now, I guess you're still not getting laid, but at least you look like a fruitcake <laughs> going through all these emotions, whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's the framework. That's the framework by, by which you go about doing this. Like, it's not that, you know, the improvement doesn't happen right away, but you actually get at the issue for what it is, and you're able to use your awareness from this to go on and create better relationships with everybody, not just with women in your life. All right, had a little interruption there, but I think that was the end of the video. Went through, uh, talked about Rocky three. <laughs> that's, that's all that matters. As long as I mentioned Rocky three. Uh, the one thing I will mention is I want to do more case studies. I, uh, I think these are, are informative and they're helpful. Uh, plus they're really easy for me to do. And I'm going to put a, most of my focus over the next couple of months in finishing my book. So what I'm saying is reach out, email, there's a contact form on the website, DM me on Twitter, put a comment in the, in the comment section below. Let me know what you're going through and I'd be happy to talk through it in, in as elaborate a way as I can. Maybe it's some situation you have, some situation your, your friend has, right? Yeah, I've got this friend, he's really into butt stuff. <laughs> what a weirdo, right? Anyways, does that mean he's gay? Not that it matters or anything, you know, those kinds of things. You, you guys get it. Uh, but the point is to interact, right? Interact in some way. Join animus.com slash schedule. That is a great way to interact. Reach out. We do free consultations. Talk about this. Talk about what goes on with this channel. Talk about it with a friend. Like, hey, there's this guy on, on YouTube who says that not only is psychology real, but it's based on certain principles, and we really just need to apply those principles in order to manage our issues. It's not easy to do by any means, but it definitely is a simple process that you just engage with and you continue to manage your issues. Isn't this, doesn't that sound crazy? Also leave a comment. You know, a lot of this, you know what I'm talking about here. I don't know if you see this, but what I'm saying here is actually very controversial. It's a fully laid out, like deductively valid way that essentially says, you know, yin and yang, they're not opposites. It's the same thing. It's the same thing expressed in two different ways. That's very controversial. You should be upset at me. You should have a lot of negative things to say. So put that in, uh, put that in the comments. So yeah, join animus.com slash schedule. I mean, how that works, how the consultations work is you just let me know what's going on with you. I ask a bunch of personal questions, very personal and uncomfortable, you know, which talking through that I think is therapeutic in itself. And then I'll let you know what's going on. I'll let you know what your loop is. We can begin to talk through it. So if nothing else, you can take what I talk about here 
in these YouTube videos and, and begin to work through, begin to process this, uh, process this stuff on your own. Yeah, I can't be left to my own devices, my own devices when it comes to making YouTube videos because I just, you know, I'll put things like deductively valid in the title. Nobody cares about that. All right. Well, thanks, guys. That's enough for me. Uh, take care. And I look forward to hearing from you.